thank you very much, uh, Devjani and uh, Praveen, for joining us for this uh, special interview on money control. Hours after releasing uh, the annual strategic uh, report from NASCOM, which is actually very bullish about the industry, about its contribution overall. Uh, Devjani, if I can come to you first, you know, a majority of the CEOs surveyed expect significantly higher growth, significantly uh, higher hiring numbers too. What's driving this optimism? Is this going to come from the traditional markets, new markets? Is digital going to be a huge driver going forward? Yeah, all of those, Chandra, and some more. I think on one hand, you have... Uh, we have seen significantly accelerated digital transformation in, in 2020, right? Um, and across verticals, across verticals, banks, manufacturing, um, retail, every sector, name a sector, healthcare, I mean, name a sector, and we have seen tremendous uh, acceleration in, in digitization, in automation. We have seen significant increase in digital spends so while we saw a slight decline in overall technology spends, but that was uh, pretty much driven by traditional IT spending going down. But if you look at the digital spend, that had actually gone up significantly. Um, and that's roughly around, uh, I think if I'm not wrong, that is right now somewhere in the range of 30 percent plus for the industry. Um, so one is that. Second, everyone is expecting... Um, some sort of recovery to start taking place, given that we have vaccines that have already started going out globally. So, you know, a lot depends on vaccine timelines. And of course, we have to see that how effective, effective these vaccines are. We are hoping, all fingers crossed, that they are effective and they are able to keep people safe. But there is a tremendous amount of positivity when people see, um, you know, for the, for the outlook that CEOs have for 2020. And last but not the least, I think the ability of the IT industry to adapt to the crisis, the fact that we have actually come out of it more resilient um, than ever and more relevant than ever. And it's very important to keep that in mind. Um, I think has just added to the confidence of every single CEO. So those will be my three uh, takeaways. Praveen, um, you know, some people feel that the second half of the year might see some sort of a tapering in growth because some of the spend that's coming for digital could go to dedicated digital firms, the niche digital firms, you know, like EPAM in the US. Um, are you worried about this trend or is the industry in a position to service some of this new kind of digital spending that's coming in? Yes, a big part of the growth has come from digital. Uh, today, it's about uh, 28 to 30% of uh, overall IT industry revenue. And uh, it has grown significantly higher than uh, uh, traditional services. Uh, revenue. So that's the first point. And second one, in this pandemic, we have clearly shown uh, uh, our ability to uh, adopt new technology and help our clients embrace new technology uh, for building resilience in their own operations and deal with the pandemic. Uh, we have invested a lot today, about one fourth of our workforce is, uh, have digital skills. Uh, uh, we continue to invest in uh, growing digital skills. Uh, there's a tremendous shortage of digital skills worldwide. And in fact, uh, uh, one of the biggest competitive advantage uh, anyone can have is uh, skills uh, going forward, given the uh, kind of disruptions we are seeing, tech-led disruptions. So India has a huge advantage here. Uh, I mean, today, uh, as I said, uh, more than uh, 1 million plus uh, people with digital skills, and the number continues to grow significantly. I mean, even in, in the past 12 months, uh, the number has inc increased over 30%. So I, I, I don't think we are uh, worried about IPAM or anything. I, I think uh, there is uh, there is going to be a tremendous shortage of skills going forward as well over the next two to three years. Uh, and uh, I think we are on the right track in terms of uh, uh, focusing on reskilling, importing digital technologies to our workforce. So I'm very confident that uh, we'll be able to take advantage of it. If I can just add to that, you know, you know, just to give you a perspective, if you look at digital skill demand, uh, CAGR, say 2020 to 2024, this CAGR is around 34 to 38% for demand, whereas the supply CAGR is less than 30%. So mm -hmm. there is a gap that we are seeing. And I think in this kind of a 
scenario where the demand is more than the supply. I mean, the kind of effort that India is putting in, where the industry and the government uh, has joined hands and they're investing big time in driving skilling of, uh, you know, around 4 million people over the next few years is definitely going to pay off. Uh, and I think that's a huge advantage that we have growing for us. Right. And Devjani, do you also see the model fundamentally altering? You know, for the longest time, it used to be around this global delivery model. But with 95, 98% of employees working remotely, I mean, will we see a radical shift in the way we view ID companies, this whole on-site offshore concept? Is it just going to transition to, you know, work anywhere? And because of that, the dependence on visas also will come down in a huge way. It's still early days to predict what exactly the future will look like. I want to be clear on that. But we definitely have the opportunity right now to shape the future a bit, right? And I think what we are working towards is a hybrid model where companies have the flexibility to decide who works from home and who works on campus, not just companies, but also employees. But a lot will depend on the kind of work. So some, you know, some of the projects require tremendous amount of security. Um, and we have to ensure that for those projects, the employees are on site. Um, so, you know, as long as we build in a very strong flexibility into the model and give the companies the option to decide between the two. And by the way, uh, every month the decision can change depending on the kind of work the companies are doing. I think that's going to be the new model. We are going to see definitely a certain percentage of employees working from home or remote working. We are going to see increased presence of IT employees in smaller cities, as we saw in the pandemic. And I think that's going to open up a lot of new opportunities for India. So, uh, We'll see how this plays out, but the future is definitely hybrid. Right. In fact, I was just coming to that, uh, uh, Praveen. Um, you know, is this going to lead to a chain reaction? Because I, the ID industry has such a huge impact on multiple sectors. You know, it's a multiplier with respect to jobs, uh, whether it's, and it has such a huge role, whether it comes to uh, consumption, investment. So is this going to have a chain reaction on India? And the point that Devjani touched upon, you know, that we are going to see many employees uh, come out of smaller towns in India. How is that really going to play in the minds of companies when they go out to hire? Will companies be more open to smaller colleges in smaller cities? No, I think there is uh, probably a tipping point in terms of uh, growth in tier two and tier three cities. And not only for tech industry, but for any industry in general. Uh, and uh, particularly, uh, services industry probably have an advantage uh, in uh, remote ways of working. So you will continue to see uh, more and more companies uh, much more open to recruiting talent wherever they are available. Uh, and this will also probably lead to newer models of uh, gig working, part-time working, probably more women in workforce. So there are huge positives there. Obviously, I mean, there are uh, many things that we still need to sort out uh, there are policy issues, there are regulatory issues that we need to sort out and other things. This model will evolve, but I uh, view it very, very positively. It's a great opportunity to decongest your big cities, uh, ensure growth in uh, tier two, tier three cities, uh, increase diversity and inclusivity of workforce, huge opportunity, not only for IT industry, but for other industries as well. Devjani, you want to add to that before we wrap up? No, I think I completely agree with everything Praveen said. This is our opportunity to ensure the future is more inclusive, the future is more sustainable, for the for not just for the IT industry, but hopefully for all industries. And uh, we cannot afford to miss it. On that note, thank you very much, both of you, for joining us on Money Control. And I look forward to listening and viewing both of you during the summit in the next few days. Thank you very much. Thank you.